general principles of biochemistry. Clinical chemistry tests measure concentrations or activities of biological important substances called analytes in various body fluids that is whole blood, plasma, serum, urine and cerebrospinal fluid. The results obtained from such measurements are compared to biological reference intervals or BRI or medical decision levels to provide diagnostic and clinical meanings for the value. Quantitation of routine chemistry analytes is typically based on one of the two measurement principles. Measurement of light which is photometry or spectrophotometry or measurement of electrochemical potential also known as potentiometry. The amount of signal, light or electrical voltage is predictably related to the amount of analyte in the solution. Calibrators are solutions of known concentration and are used to establish the relationship between the size of an optical or electrical signal and the corresponding concentration of analyte. We will discuss potentiometry in a separate video on electrolyte measurement. In this video, we will focus on photometry. The principle of operation of a biochemistry analyzer is based on Lambert's and Beer's law of photochemistry. When monochromatic light passes through a solution, there is a quantitative relationship between the solute concentration and the intensity of transmitted light. Higher the concentration of the solute present in the solution, higher would be the absorption of light and reduction in intensity of light transmitted. The amount of light absorbed by the solution is proportional to the concentration of the solute present. Photometry uses this relationship to measure concentration of various analytes by measuring the absorbance of light as optical density. A monochromator or filter is used to select the desired wavelength of light for each analysis, depending on the properties of the substance being measured. Before proceeding to testing of samples, let us learn about calibration. Calibration. What is calibration? Calibration is a mechanism by which you create a standard curve using samples or materials with known values. This curve can be used for analyzing unknown samples. In the case of auto-analyzers, these curves are plotted by the equipment using a standard. If you want to understand how to plot this manually, please see the HB by Drapkin's method where we have explained the details of plotting a graph. How does calibration work? The calibrators or standards have a specified value which is traceable to the SI unit. The higher the quality of the calibrator, the better the traceability and lesser the degree of uncertainty of the value. Calibrators should be prepared in the matrix similar to the clinical specimen such as urine or serum. Types of calibrations Single point calibration a single calibrator of a known concentration is used. This is commonly used for semi-quantitative assays, the single point being the threshold concentration for determining whether it's positive or negative. This can be used for quantitative measurements over a limited range of linearity after validation of performance characteristics. Multi-point calibration. Two or more different calibrator concentrations are used. The calibrator should preferably span the entire range of analytical values for the given analyte. Procedure Calibrator, single point, or calibrators, multipoint, are run as samples using the same procedure as specified for the clinical sample. The response, that is absorbance, is obtained for each calibrator concentration. It is recorded. A graph is plotted with calibrator concentration on the x-axis and the recorded absorbance on the y-axis. Types of calibration function. Calibration function can be linear, curved, or may take a special form. Example, 
four parametric immuno assay. Quantitation of clinical sample. The calibration factor thus obtained is used to calculate the concentration of the unknown test samples after measuring their absorbance. Concentration of the test that is unknown is equal to calibration factor into or that is multiplied by absorbance of the test. Quality controls QC. Quality controls are patient-like material ideally made from urine, serum, or spinal fluid and composed of one or more analytes of a known concentration. They can be liquid or freeze-dried, that is lyophilized. Normal quality control product contains a normal analyte being tested and abnormal quality control product contains the analyte at a concentration below or above the normal range for that analyte. Quality controls should be tested in the same manner as the patient samples. On running the QCs, the equipment multiplies the absorbance of the QC with the calibration factor and gives the result. With a valid calibration factor, the QC absorbance values should lie within a specified range. This range is determined by the laboratory through a process of running the quality controls on its own machine for at least 20 times to arrive at the mean and standard deviation. Till such time, the manufacturer prescribed range on the quality control insert may be used as a guide. Understand the target and range of each level of QC used. More about this is given in the QC videos. This range is to be defined on the equipment in order to detect outliers easily. Reconstitution of QCs are explained in the QC module. After every calibration, normal or abnormal quality control should be run and the results should be documented. If all values lie within the range, we can conclude that the analytical system is good and proceed to the testing of the patient samples. What chemistries need calibration? All chemistries need calibration. However, for certain chemistries like kinetic chemistries, it is difficult to have stable calibrators and so, the analytical system defines an appropriate calibration factor that can be used. This needs verification with QC every day. Why do you want to calibrate periodically? We have to calibrate periodically as the analytical system, equipment, reagent and environment change from time to time. Reagents deteriorate over time, equipment has wear and tear, room temperature fluctuates and so on. For every change in the analytical system, appropriate readjustments needs to be done to the calibration graph. So, your calibration frequency depends on the stability of the analytical system. Importance of calibrations Calibration function or factor is the relation between instrument response, that is signal, and the concentration of the analyte. The precision and reproducibility of the analyte method depends upon the stability of the calibration. In modern automated clinical chemistry analyzers, the calibration is very stable and so it is required very infrequently. Inbuilt mechanisms indicate when recalibration is necessary. When to calibrate? The frequency of calibration varies between laboratories. In general, the calibration is recommended when there is a change in the reagent lot, a systematic shift in quality control values, discordance in patient's results after expiry of calibration stability as determined by that lab. What is the stability of the calibrator itself? Some calibrators are liquid and will be stable till expiry if the storage conditions are adequately met. Some are lyophilized and have to be reconstituted very carefully to have the accuracy maintained. The storage instructions are also to be strictly followed. Multi-calibrators contain several analytes. Different analytes in multi-calibrators will have different stabilities. For instance, the enzyme stability may be very short. Bilirubins may have stability less than other endpoint analytes. These should be read understood and communicated. How to monitor or track the calibration of a test? Monitor the absorbance of calibrator by the given format. 
For example, you run the calibrator for glucose. You can see from the log that the blank absorbance, calibrator absorbance and the calibrator factors are all within range for day 1, day 2 and day 3. But on day 4, the values are out of range. This is an indication to troubleshoot and rerun the calibrations. So far, we have learnt about analyte calibration. Now, we will look at equipment calibration. What is the difference between the calibration of an analyte and the calibration of equipment? What we were talking about so far was about calibrating an analyte. The equipment also undergoes wear and tear according to the use. So, there has to be a mechanism to check and readjust this. This is called an equipment calibration. Equipment under warranty. The calibration is provided by the manufacturer free of cost. Equipment after warranty. Annual maintenance contract or a comprehensive maintenance contract with the manufacturer or third party will make it easier to get your equipment checked and calibrated. Quality control. We already talked about QCs along with calibration verification. Here are some more details. Please follow the instructions in NABL. Two levels of QC shall be included at least once on the day of performing the test irrespective of the size of the laboratory. If the laboratory is operational 24-7, two level controls shall be run in the peak hour subsequently one level every eight hours. The daily QC values shall be documented and LJ chart shall be plotted on a daily basis. The laboratory shall derive its own mean and standard deviation using a minimum of 20 data points to plot an LJ chart. The laboratory shall define its own criteria for accepting or rejecting the run and be able to justify the application. After calibration has been performed and successfully verified using QCs, we move to the actual testing of unknown patient samples. There are three main kinds of tests we generally do on these analyzers. Endpoint tests, rate or fixed time tests and kinetic tests. We will discuss one test of each kind in this tutorial. We will take up the principle of each as we get there. When an analyte is measured using a chemical reaction, there are two options for assessing concentration. Wait until the reaction is complete and all of the analyte is converted into the product. This is called endpoint reaction. Or measure the rate of change in the product found over time. This is called rate reaction. Endpoint chemistry, a method employed for the estimation of analytes, which would be completely consumed in the reaction. The endpoint for a particular analyte is normally achieved within 5 to 15 minutes at 37 degrees Celsius. This absorbance increases against the reagent blank absorbance over a period of time. This increase in absorbance continues till it reaches a stable value marking the endpoint of the reaction. No further change in absorbance would occur if it is read a while later. The colored complex or non-colored complex thus formed at the end of reaction period is read for its absorbance and multiplied by a calibration factor to get the value of the analyte in that sample. This method is standardized to consume the amount of analyte equivalent to the linearity level mentioned for individual chemistries within the stipulated reaction time. If the analyte value is beyond the linearity, then the graph will not be linear and the test is repeated, the dilution as per the protocol outlined. We will discuss this also again later. An example of the end point reaction is the measurement of glucose by glucose oxidase or peroxidase, GOD, POD method. Glucose is oxidized into a red colored compound the intensity of the red colored compound is proportional to the glucose concentration and is measured at 505 nanometers, which is 490 to 530 nanometers. Fixed time method or rate methods. The methodology of these tests are based on the principle of difference in absorbance between an initial value and final value during a specified time interval. 
the time interval is optimized in such a way to minimize the interferences from other analytes in the sera or sample with the test analytes. The assumption is that a constant amount of product is produced during the specified time period. Generally, these tests have a pre-incubation period of the sample with the reagent which can be programmed within the instrument or outside. It is during this period that any substance other than the test analyte present in the sample which could react and interfere with the reagent system is removed completely. The time interval is standardized and usually fixed to a minute or two to give accurate and precise results for the analyte being estimated. Fixed time chemistries could be of two types. A. Increasing type. This is fixed time chemistry progressing in positive direction. The final absorbance is greater than initial absorbance. Therefore, the difference between the final and initial absorbance, called as delta absorbance, is always positive. Decreasing type. This is fixed time chemistry progressing in a negative direction. Here, the initial absorbance is greater than final absorbance. Therefore, the difference between the final and the initial absorbance called as delta absorbance is always negative. An example of the fixed time or rate reaction is the measurement of creatinine by Jaffe's method. Principle Creatinine reacts with alkaline picrate to produce a reddish color. This is also known as the Jaffe reaction. The colored complex is red at 5.5 nanometers. Kinetic method The principle of measurement is the difference in absorbance between two points over a period of specified time during the progress of the reaction. The assumption is that a constant amount of product is produced in unit time during the time interval. This is also rate chemistry but the principle depends on the progressive reaction. Usually the reaction is very rapid and thus reaction time is short to avoid any danger of enzyme degradation. These tests are performed with a pre-incubation phase, usually done inside the equipment as programmed into it, during which any substances in the sample which might interfere with the test would have fully reacted with the reagent system. In kinetic test procedures, the difference in absorbance between two points taken during the linear stage of progression of the test is taken into consideration to yield the delta absorbance. This time interval is very short, usually ranging from 20 seconds to 1 minute or more. The delta absorbance obtained is multiplied by an appropriate factor for calculating the exact value of analyte. The delta absorbance that are consistent over a period of time are taken for calculation. These tests are standardized to give a linear delta absorbance over a period of time and up to the specified linearity mentioned for each analyte. Kinetic chemistries could be classified as A. Increasing type In this type, the reaction proceeds in positive direction, wherein the initial absorbance is always lower than the latter absorbance. The difference between a latter point and an earlier point is always positive. B. Decreasing type. This type of chemistry is also called as a negative direction type. Initial absorbance is always higher than the latter absorbance. Difference between a latter point and an earlier point is always negative. An example of the kinetic reaction is the measurement of SGOT by IFCC without P5P method. Principle in this case of ALT. This reaction is based on IFCC recommendations without pyridoxal phosphate. The series of reactions involved in the assay system results in reduction of NAD to NADH, which is measured by change in absorbance at 340 nanometers.